I'm Rich Nielsen. I'm Tristan Duke. We're with the Optics Division here at the Metabolic Studio. Um, so the moon build. The moon build. The moon build. Uh, the moon build started with a uh, space across the river that was uh, an old uh, tow yard and before that was probably a Ford dealership and before that was a um, uh, they made beehives and bee boxes and all kinds of things like that. Um, we took over the um, parking garage for the tow yard and um, yeah, and incidentally that was the tow yard that impounded uh, OJ's, oh yeah, OJ's white bronco. OJ's white bron bronco was there. <laughs> that's right. So that's a part of the history. Yeah, it was actually parked up on the main floor at, in the corner for a long, long time. Yeah, and I think the tow yard guys rifled through the glove box and tampered with evidence. Probably, so, I'm sure yeah. that's how perfect. Um, so we, have, we, we took on that space. It's actually uh, in comparison to the space that we're currently working in, um, the ceiling height is lower, um, but it gives us a much it's a much bigger footprint. Um, the difficult part of all garages is that garages are designed uh, so that water flows out of them. So this nothing is flat. Nothing is flat, and actually, there's nothing really square in the building either. Um, half of the building is subterranean. And there is a... Um, Which is actually good for a dark room. Yeah, it's going to be the darkest room we've ever had. Yeah. By all, all our other dark rooms were are only dark. quote-unquote yeah. dark yeah. rooms. Yeah, uh, they have <laughs> lots of holes in it. This does, at, at the moment, there's still holes in the, in the, uh, in the wet room, but uh, those will be taken care of. But when we close the doors in the dark room space, it's, it's black. Well, the other really exciting thing about what the moon build kind of represents in the progression of this work is everything that we've done so far we've been inventing as as we went along and so we've designed ourselves into a lot of corners mm -hmm. because we just didn't know where the work was going to go. Yeah, this so, was a fresh start. Yeah, this so this we're at this mature point in the work, and suddenly this golden opportunity came yeah. to have a blank slate, which yeah. is pretty rare, actually. And to we've have. been contemplating. We've been we've been moving slowly out of the existing shipping container for our developing it was and very our processing. Um, and it worked. It was very romantic, and we with Lauren who's standing behind the camera we would all work very closely together inside the shipping container but uh, uh, the opportunity to start at square one and redesign this uh, space around all the knowledge that we've acquired yeah. in the past few years both in developing and taking pictures and storing and archiving and, and presen presentation and, and, and things that we uh, have wanted to do but have yeah. not been able to do yeah. uh, because of the space requirements or equipment that we needed. Yeah. So. So yeah, we were very excited about the subterranean part of it. Um, it's, it's pretty incredible if you think about it that the entire body of liminal work, everything we've produced so far, has literally come out of a eight foot by twenty foot. Yeah, this square space. Yeah, yeah. the space that we're standing this, in. This both in the in the taking the of the pictures and then also our, in the printing. Yeah, our, and our dark room up till now has been a replica of the liminal camera. So, so this new dark room is a fantasy dark room. Yeah, it's a it's insane. Yeah, and 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 now that we're working with the new color format, where the paper is as tall as we are, it's a six foot. Yeah. Paper, uh, you know, and, and really that was the beginning. The that's realization. That's when we really realized we couldn't be in the in the shipping container anymore, as far as the the processing. processing. Yeah. Um, so we were already kind of thinking about that, and then when uh, Lauren presented this opportunity, uh, we jumped at the chance to actually design and build a space that was going to be able to handle. And actually, even hopefully at some point, the uh, bigger images than that, so, um, and smaller images, because we also yeah. don't really yeah, yeah, have yeah. room for That's standard darkroom practice. Mm -hmm. So we'll have that incorporated in in yeah. there as well. So the the moon build. I mean, what we started with was starting with a floor plan, um, which a lot of that w that took a lot of kind of thinking through yeah. our our whole workflow and the process. Yeah. And then. Um, 
we've uh, we've been designing these uh, kind of custom a, a couple key pieces that we realized would really improve the work. We we had two very large sinks made, which this will be the first time we can unroll a print and actually be able to see it as it processes. Um, it's going to allow us to also process um, processing. all sorts of different substrates of paper that we couldn't do before yeah, because we used paper. to roll the paper really tightly and some materials they either can't roll at all or if you roll them they get damaged. So art papers, um, rigid substrates. Yeah, being able to coat our own papers on that scale. Mm -hmm. You know, we've not been able to do that either. Yeah. Um, the other thing we weren't able to do or, or if we were able to do it, it was going to require also starting from scratch here is all the plumbing, uh, putting in all the pipes that we need for the, both the rainwater and the river water that we'll be using in the processing, mm -hmm. and uh, all the proper drainage so that mm -hmm. we can actually move the liquids to the right spot so our silver reclamation is yeah. now going to be in line with everything that we're doing. The, uh, the um, uh, wastewater that we produce from the processing will now be able to be uh, moved back out onto the site and according to um, yeah, uh, the, the needs of the uh, of the rest of the studio can be utilized in the different circles. Yeah, this is this is actually a very exciting possibility because with the studio's water right now and the outdoor footprint outside of the the space yeah. where all of this work with purifying water is going to be taking place, we can actually start to really implement some of the things yeah, and demonstrate part of the vision. Uh, yeah, of because it won't using, be using water, you know, from the LA River for all of our processing. Yeah, and we have been reclaiming the silver from from the process, but now we can even take that a step further with doing some of that treatment more on site and yeah. actually recapturing, cleaning the water on site. Yeah. So and demonstrate all really this. Exciting. So we'll be able to show and, and, and trace all the pipes through the, through the facility and, and out onto. So the, the, really the moon site's like a campus. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a radically different space than this space presently. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to give the studio an opportunity to really branch out into the experimentation side of things. So, um, um, so that stuff is really interesting. We also have enough power. Mm -hmm. You know, that's always the problem. So we, we were able to do all the infrastructure stuff and make it uh, uh, um, up to date so that we can also expand upon it so that we can uh, put new uh, materials and new ideas into, into these dark rooms as we sort of uh, continue to experiment on our own with, yeah. with, with the processes. And I, I think that aspect, like you said, of of the moon site being like a um, creative campus mm -hmm. is, is really what's the most exciting about yeah. the space. There's yeah. there's enough room that all the divisions of the metabolic studio can kind of form these fully formed um, units that can then interact with each other and have aut autonomy within the yeah. whole. And still be um, able to demonstrate how the studio works and all the components in the studio that and how they all fit together. Yeah. You know, which is can be seen here, but it's it, it, to actually be able to lay all this stuff out ahead of time and make it work, like Jaime's uh, system of uh, water catchment and knowing where all those pipes are going. You know, it's really exciting to be able to sort of be part of that um, method. So, yeah. so, so we but built walls after that. After we designed it, we built walls. The designing was a really kind of difficult yeah. part of things. Too. They, once you set those walls, that's yeah. it. Yeah, you, you know. kind of had to, and there, you know, there's posts inside the building for holding the ceilings up. Storage of the old collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the 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 existing archive, and the beauty of that sculpture, um, to design that into this new yeah, space and, I think, and the flexibility of it yeah, too. I think what's really exciting too is that this will be the first time that the entirety of the optics yeah. division is in one area. In one so we're going to have a gallery space to be able to hang work and a look working, at the work. A working gallery. An, an archiving space yeah. where the entire Prep archive space. of negatives is going to be in place and then, and then we have uh, 
we have these dark rooms. For and we've imagined with, the, with where we got to with the storage system we're presently using and, and our uh, layout tables, which is always crowded with uh, non-layout material, uh, we've realized certain things about how our flow works. So this is also going to be another opportunity to um, streamline that so yeah. that when guests come or Lauren is giving a tour or we have somebody wanting to see specific things, we can actually walk into the archive, pull it out and put it onto a table yeah. and, and, and talk about it. So. But, but most of all, I'm just excited to get back I can't to being wait to photographers. Get back to work. I can't wait. Those dark we've, rooms we've are been, so dark. We've been contractors for the last I'm obsessed Seven with how black they sir. get. And we made these fantastic corridors to get in, which, which again, <laughs> goes back to this sort of fantasy idea. Like, my high school darkroom had those passages, yeah. and I would hang out in them. That was the best place to hang out. So I'm very excited about this. Talk about liminal zones. They, the, they are definitely liminal zones. Liminal so, thresholds, you know, yeah. The lighting is great. It's very exciting. We can't wait. It's We're still, you know, a couple of days away from getting in there, but we're close.